So the first part of this was to make something singular to plural or vice versa. Remember that if the word ends in a vowel, you add an S, consonant, can't spell it today, consonant, there you go, I may have spelled that wrong. Now, remember that if there is an accent mark, On the last syllable, ninety nine percent of the time in the plural form, you take it off. Okay? Then also, if the word ends in Z, you change it to C. Okay, so here we go. So, first of all, we should know what this word is. It changed from a Z to a C. So this is lapis, the accent mark. Amigo, I make it amigo, so I just add an S. This one over here, look at this. It ends with an accent mark on the last syllable. So that means I take it off. Last syllable has an accent mark. So I take it off. Numbers. Okay, numbers. I look at the two numbers and then Right here, instead of a dash, I would put a comma. So, remember, 22 has an accent mark. Then I have 14. Now, when you're dealing with this, I can't just say 7 because then you wouldn't remember that there's a zero there also. So you have to say the zero and then the 7. Same thing happens over here. So I put DSC says make sure there's an accent mark. Now somebody asked, how do I know where the accent marks are? Right now, you just have to memorize it. Memorize all the words that have accent marks and where the accent mark belongs. Then I would do cero, uno. Remember when we're counting, uno stays as uno. And then veinti. Tres. Then last but not least of these, quince. Diez y siete and diez. Okay, there. Now for the most part, we haven't learned anything that moves around or anything. This, this stuff translates exactly how it is. The word for there is, is the word I. Now pencil is lapis. Lapis is masculine and it's singular. So, well, where do I wanna put it? Maybe I'll just put it down here. So if I'm talking about indefinite articles, that means a, an, and some. If I'm talking about those, then I have masculine, feminine, I have singular, plural. That means that this is un, unos, una, and unas. Since lapis is singular, that means it's going to get this column, and it's uh, masculine singular, it's going to be un. So I un lapis. Again, again, there is or there are is the word I. 21. Now, <clears throat> this says it's masculine passengers. 
So this is pasajeros. Oops, except for I can't spell. So I need to do the 21. So bainti. Now, remember that if a number ending in uno that comes before a masculine noun changes and it changes to un and when you change bainte to bainte un you have an accent mark on the u and make sure you put a period because it is a sentence oh i didn't put a period in english okay next door we're translating exactly how it is Joel e marina can't spell marina r so that comes from the verb ser this is the singular side this is the plural side now you have to determine joel and marina is that singular or plural that's plural the very first one is we well, that doesn't say anything about I. There's no I there, so it can't be that. Vosotros. There's nothing about you there, so it can't be that. Ellos, on the other hand, ooh, it could be they. Now, is it the feminine they or is it the masculine they? Well, Joel is a masculine person, so it's going to be a masculine they. So what is the conjugation of the verb? The conjugation of the verb is son. And then estudiantes. And estudiantes is plural because there are two people. Right here, it says the plural of estudiantes. Okay, so let's go over here. He is. Okay. When I'm doing my conjugations, there's one person. There's one person, it's he. Well, this is the he. So, L. What is the conjugation of is for L? S. Now, driver. Conductor. Why is it not conductora? Because he is masculine. Also, because this is an occupation or profession, it does not get this in Spanish. Does not get the indefinite article if it is an occupation or profession. Again, there are I. Now we just talked about this a second ago. Oops, I don't want to make it that close. This is plural. Yeah, plural. But because this ends in uno and this word is masculine, I make it, oops, I almost wrote the wrong thing. I make it bainteun. E. Now, this is mochila. One backpack. Now, if it's before a feminine uh, noun, Uno changes to una. So this would be una mochila. Guess what that came from? Right here. The indefinite articles. That's where it came from. If you can't tell, the unos change to these forms right here. Uno changes to those forms. 
So you're saying a or an item. Trey. Trey's a guy. Plays on the Dodgers. Okay. Now, if I'm looking at, since I already have these right here, Trey is one person. He's not I. He's not you. He's a he, though. What is the conjugation of Sarah that goes with he? The conjugation of Sarah that goes with he is S. Now, is man a profession? No. So I put un, un hombre. Okay, let's come down here. Mrs. Shaw. Okay, anytime you use Mrs., because you're talking about the person, you're gonna put a la because she's a female. So you're gonna put la senora, or you could have put capitalized senora, Shaw, and Shaw is capitalized because last names are capitalized, is. So again, we're dealing with this right here. She's not a I, she's not a you, She's not a he, but she's a she. So what is the conjugation that goes with she? It's S. So this would be S and profesora. Can't spell again. But because this right here is an occupation, you don't put the indefinite article. The books. Los libros. Now, this is masculine. Los libros. It's masculine and it's plural. So if I look at my, my uh, pronouns, this is all the singular stuff on the left-hand side here. I need the plural. Nosotros. Well, los libros isn't we. Vosotros, well, that's not you. Ellos, well, that's a they. Well, guess what? Los libros is a they. If I was going to use a pronoun, I would say, instead of saying the books, I would say they. So this right here is the they. And what goes with it? Son. Son. And because... There's more than one book. You have I know we didn't talk about this. This is another chapter. But telling you now that you have to make the adjectives plural also. Okay, next one. It. We talked about there is no subject pronoun. for it. So, because we're talking about one item, we would just say S. Una foto. And why is it una instead of un? Because remember, foto is actually photografia. Okay, so photo is just a shortened form of photografia. Now, answering questions in complete sentences. Number one thing to look at is what verb is used. So if I'm looking at this one right here, S is used. This says, if I'm translating it, it says from where is Lucas. That's what it's asking. If I translate it directly. And in English, I would say Lucas is from. And if you asked him, he would have told you Croatia. So Lucas. What is the ser form of Lucas? Or for Lucas? Well, Lucas is a is a boy so he's a he I didn't mean to do that he 
he. So the conjugation for he is s. So down here somewhere, I'm gonna use s from day, and where is he from, Croatia? Okay. I look at this. What is the verb in this sentence? Well, the verb in this sentence, well, say is not really the verb, but it's what we're going to use with the verb. The other thing I'm going to say is, what is the subject? What is the subject? So if I'm looking at this, the subject of this, this is asking, what is the teacher's, I can't spell, name. Really and truly, it's asking, how does the teacher call herself? That's really what the sentence is asking. But we don't ask it that way in English. We ask, what is the teacher's name? So, the teacher's name is blank. Or, the teacher calls herself blank. Okay? So, how do I say the teacher? La profesora. Now, we don't have to change the verb because it already gave it to you. You don't even have to change anything. Say, llama. And then what's my name? La señorita. Or if you prefer, and then you put spell my last name. I have to do it really small. I don't have a lot of space. There we go. <laughs> there is a period there. It's just not showing the period. Sorry about that. There we go. Okay. So I have the subject of the sentence. I have the verb. The say really isn't verb, but for right now that's what we're going to say and then you answered the question okay so let's go to the next one what is the capital of Chile what's the verb right there what's the subject of the sentence the capital of Chile so, how do I answer it? I write the subject. La capital de Chile es. And then you just fill in the blank. What's the capital of Chile? Santiago. Let's do the next one. How do you say... Good afternoon. In Spanish. That was horrible. Okay. This is the whole verb form. So, you could write it in two different ways. You said, and this is the subject. Well, it's actually not the subject. It is the subject, but not. Just to answer this, just put se dice. And then put what it means. Se dice. Buenas. Buenas. A-S. Tardes. Some of you keep putting buenos. Buenos is with day. If this was good morning, 
and you use dias. Dias is masculine, where tardes is feminine. So this one is buenos dias. But buenas tardes and buenas noches. Noches and tardes are both plural, where dias is not. Conjugation of ser. Okay. Um, I guess I'll cordon off a space up here. So if I have ser, the yo form of ser is soy. The tu form is eres. The el, ella, and usted. Now I also want to talk about is as I'll talk about it in a second. Nosotros, I'm just going to put the nosotros, not the nosotras, because I don't have a lot of space. And then ellos, ellas, ustedes. Son. So, this is first person, this is second person, now, these two, the usted is really second person, but this is third person. Okay. These are the these are the and these are the words that we're going to use. So let's look here. It says yo. So I look over here at my conjugations and what conjugation goes with yo? Soy. Okay? Ellos. I look over here. What goes with ellos? Son. Let's go over here. Two. What goes with two? Eres. What goes with vosotros? Sois. And you just have to memorize these. Isabel. Okay, so now this is not a pronoun. But Isabel is third person because it's not talking about I and it's not talking about you. So Isabel is a single person. So if it's a single person, this is the single person side. So it has to be one of those. It doesn't talk about I and it doesn't talk about you. So it has to be talking about the third person. And Isabel is a she, so it gets the S form. Okay, Luna and Maya. That's more than one. That means that it is the plural side. So that means it has to be here. Maya and Luna doesn't say anything about yo or tu. It doesn't say vosotros, it doesn't say nosotros. That means it's third person. Okay? It means it's third person. Well, if I look at third person, I'm talking about ellos and ellas. Well, Luna and Maya are two female dogs because they're my dogs. That means that we're dealing with ellas. It's third person ellas. So, what is the conjugation of the verb for ellas? It is son. Nosotros. Okay, if I come up here to nosotros, it's somos. Now, Señor Lopez. This right here, automatically, that's third person. Well, that's formal. It's third person. It is formal. The fact that it has you, okay? The fact that it has two, two always determines that it's second person, okay? That part is second person. This is plural because there are two people. So that means it's plural. So when I'm looking at this, that means it's this side. Well, it does have you in it. So you is this one or this one, but because it says that it's formal, 
that means that this one is the one that's formal. So that's the one that we're going to use. So what's the conjugation that goes with ustedes? Son. Paula y Lucas. This is third person and it's plural. Third person plural is son. Okay, again, this is third person because how do I know it's third person? Because it doesn't say you and it doesn't say I. The minute it says you or I in it, it changes to first or second person. But right now it doesn't have you or I in it, so it's third person and it's plural. So what is the conjugation for third person plural? Son. This one has an I in it. As soon as it says I, any time that it says I, it makes it first person. And because there's more than one person, it makes it plural. So first person plural would be somos. Look up here. First person, first person plural, that's right there. First person plural is right there. Okay, coming down here. Does this one say you or I in it? It sure does not say you or I. So that makes it third person. And there's more than one person. So third person plural is son. Right here. It's plural. It doesn't say you or I. So again, this is third person plural. So that is son. This one, it has the word two in it. And two is informal. Okay, so when I look at this, this is the one that we have to talk about. Remember that I said two is informal, so that would be vosotros. But Spain is the only place, for the most part, that uses vosotros. But I'm going to be teaching you vosotros because when you get to college and do Spanish or if you read something from Spain, you have to understand the vosotros form. So, vosotros sois or ustedes son. So on this one, oops, this could either be, I didn't mean to put that. This could either be sois or son. It doesn't matter on that one because... It is informal and it is second person, but because sois is not always used in most of the countries, son can also be used. Again, immediately on this one it has yo, automatically puts it into first person. So this would be somos. Argentina, it is singular. We're not talking I, we're not talking you. So this is third person. Third person singular is S.